Okay guys, uh, we're back for part two of uh, building the gunslinger. <clears throat> I've got all the covers stripped off now of everything. Uh, it was pretty easy to get off. Uh, wood all looks really good. Just a few little weak joints that we're going to add some glue to and uh, get that all done and then we will start covering this thing. It's going to be a long drawn out process so there's there'll be uh, several segments of this. I'm not sure how many yet, but uh, I'm guessing around 25 or 30, so it's going to take me a while. Plus, I'm usually only working on this pretty much on the weekends, uh, maybe a little bit of the evening, so just bear with me and we will get it done, but uh, we're going to start doing some uh, gluing right now and uh, get all that done and then we can go on to the covering. Okay, we're ready to do a little reinforcement. I found just a couple of small problems. Uh, the drawback on these ARF kits, you don't have the luxury of finding these things and fixing them without tearing the cover off, which most models are built pretty good, but I found a couple. Uh, I don't know if you can see it, but right here there's a, a seam where they've seamed this together rather than use one piece, which I, that I don't understand why, or it, it may be Maybe, no, it's not. It's two pieces they've glued together because there's a seam all the way down it. Well, anyway, I don't know if you can see it or not, but if you pull on that, that seam's not real tight. So, uh, got the thin CA glue with a little fine tip on it, and all you have to do is just wick a little bit of that right in that seam, and it'll, it'll soak right up into the wood. If you have any excess that does harden on top of the wood after it's hardened, uh, take your sanding block. Uh, you can make your own out of little pieces of wood or whatever. This I just I bought this one. It's handy and the sandpaper comes in a roll. You glue pieces on. Uh, it's almost a must if you're going to do any kind of building or repairing. But after that dries, I can take this flat and, and sand that down and smooth it. You want anything like that smoothed down. If you leave any little bump at all, if it, it may feel very minute to your finger, but when you put the covering on it, it's going to show. I mean, it'll stand out like a pinhead. So you've got to have everything very, very smooth. No, no glue lumps or anything like that. This is a little bigger crack up here, so I'm going to put a little bit more in that. We're going to let that just run down the length of it. And then, being careful not to get my finger in it, we're going to do the other side. Just doesn't take a whole lot, just kind of wick it, let it wick right in there. Uh, now we'll let that dry. Ooh, burns my eyes, some stout stuff. But see, it's already a lot stronger, it won't flex like it did. But up here where the crack's bigger and more prominent, I'm going to put just a little extra glue in that. Now. I don't want to lay this on my towel <clears throat> because it will stick to it and then you got to sand all the fuzzies off of it. So we're going to lean it up over here on the camera tripod. This one also is a seam joint. You can see where the, the wood's even two different colors. They've spliced that. Actually, this is a three piece. One here, the middle one, and this one here. These seams here look to be very strong. There's no gap at all. They just didn't get that one on the uh, rudder done. There is a little bitty ding right here. I don't know if you can see it, but wood's kind of dinged out. I'm going to kind of fill that in. It's not bad enough to patch it with sawdust or anything, uh, but it, we want it good and smooth so when we cover it, and I'll sand that just a little bit. One thing I did on this, uh, generally when you get an ARF kit, when it's got the covering on it, they have already slotted for your hinges through the covering so you can see it. When I recover it, it's going to hide all those holes. 
So what I did is I took a tape measure and I measured on like the vertical fan from the top down to the center of each slot. And I know it can go a half inch or better, three quarter of an inch either side of that so I can, I know right where my marks are. I did the same thing on the ailerons. Uh, I measured from the tip of the wing of the aileron in. I wrote it all down in a little notebook how far to center of each one of these hinge slots are. That way when I get it all covered up uh, I know right where to put them. And I can do the, the wing part first and then come back and lay this up against there and make sure they're all you can even mark it with a little marker if you need to and then make sure your grooves are cut in good. I went ahead and honed out the grooves in the wood at this point. Usually you do this you know, on an ARF, it's already covered, but I went ahead and took my razor knife and widened them out a little so your CE, CA hinges will go in better. So, All right, uh, got the tail there. I believe I missed a little tiny piece of covering right here. Most of your covering comes off you can see on here there's just a little bit of residue of white. It's not bad if you, if it's very thick, you can take your sanding block and get the rest of that off of there. Be careful not to over sand and change the shape of this. If you sand too much in one spot, you'll have a dip. And anything like that, you're going to look at it right here and it's not noticeable. But you lay that covering on this and every little detail is going to show through the covering. So you've got to be sure and get it all really smooth. I'm not putting much pressure, I'm just kind of getting what I can of that little bit of white that's stuck there. It's stuck so good, what little bitty film is there, it's not going to hurt anything. The new covering will stick right over that. You just don't want to leave any big big blobs of it or anything that could come loose. So, Okay, got that part. Now let me check my glue joint here so you can't see it on the camera. But that's that's rough. I mean, it feels like a little block of sandpaper right there. That will show through the covering bad. So what I'm going to do is run this across there until it feels really smooth to my finger. All right, that feels good. I can't feel anything at all sticking up on that. Let's try it. The other side's rough too. Don't forget to do this because you'll be disappointed when you lay the covering on it. Sorry if my camera's wiggling a little bit. I've got it on a little tripod on the table. So when I bump the table and stuff, it uh, makes a little <laughs> jarring spot in it. But Okay. Always sand with the grain. The direction of the grain's running. If you sand crossways, it's going to leave more uh, sand marks. It'll show up worse. But if you do it with the grain, it won't show up. All right, we've got that all good and smooth. I'm going to lay that aside. The aileron, I uh, didn't see anything on those that needed uh, fixed. <clears throat> so we're going to the wing now. And let me see if I can back that out a little bit. Move the camera up. Okay. These uh, wing spars. They're pretty solid for the most part. These are uh, thicker. These two here and then the three are narrower. But if, I don't I don't know if you can see this or not, but right, yeah, see where that's broke? That was already like that, so I'm gonna, and there's no glue at all between this end and, and right here. It's not glued. All they did was put a little bit down inside here. So we wanna contact, lock that in. Um, so I'm gonna, you know, don't put your glue on there and then stick your wood together. Stick it together and then use your glue on the edge of it and let it wick itself into that seam. It'll it'll just soak right up in that wood. Now inside here you're not going to have to worry about little glue bubbles because there's no covering obviously going on that. So we're going to start out here at the end and we're going to wick some glue down in all that. I'm going to go down inside here Looks like they've used epoxy maybe in here, some kind. I'm not sure, but it's just not real strong. They didn't do a. I'm sure they've paid for some little ten-year-old kid over there in factories in China to put these things together. And they, they're no telling how many hundreds a day of them they throw together. So uh, you can't do anything in a hurry. You got to take your time. So 
So while I've got the covering off, I'm going to reinforce this. There again, it's, it's just like a house structure. You've got your framework. It's somewhat weak to a point, but once you get the siding on it and the roof, it, it all ties together. Same thing here. You get the covering on this, and you iron it down to all these ridge tops. Uh, it's going to be very strong. So, All in all, um, I'm pretty pleased with it. It doesn't look bad at all. Uh, I just, like I said, I just want to go in here and any joints that I think might be a little weak, we want to reinforce. Now on top right here, if there's a anything you can feel, sand that because you want that smooth. But down inside here, you don't have to worry about it. So I'm going to do all this. Let some run down those. I'll tell you what, this super glue is burning my eyes. I'm going to turn my fan off. Whew, man. Eyes are just watered. But none of these joints right up here at the top had enough glue in them. Kind of a weak spot. So we're going to wick a bunch of super glue. Not a bunch. You don't want to overdo it. But just, just enough to let it flow down in there on those seams. Okay. We got all that done. Um, let's look around up here. Everything on the edge looks good. I don't see any weak spots at all. Uh, and these look like they're glued good. I am going to reinforce the firewall a little bit. Now, if you can see right here, that little corner is not even, uh, it's flexing. So there's not enough glue in that. That needed to have a, a lot more glue in there than what they've got. Uh, they also, one thing they did not do on this model, most of your better brands ARS, the uh, firewall will already be fuel proofed. Uh, they have absolutely nothing on this firewall. So if I was to just build this and fly it and get all the fuel on this wood right here over time, it'll just soak that up and cause the joints to come loose and an engine falling off is not good. Um, so we're kind of reinforcing that. And then what I'm going to do inside here, and I'll show you in just a minute, I'm going to take some uh, triangle stock and I'm going to cut some little pieces and uh, put all up through here and along the bottom center and over here. I can't make full length on the bottom. Well, I could, I guess, if I cut out notches, but the blind nuts are kind of in the way. So I'm just going to put a piece in between them. But any of that extra, and you flow that glue in there and tie all that together, it's going to make that firewall a lot stronger than it originally is. Um, the thickness looks okay, but it just, these joints right here didn't have much glue on them. So I'm going to fill all them in. Same thing down here on the bottom part. Get some extra glue in there. Alrighty. There again, if you have any glue spots that dry hard, check all your surfaces before you put the covering on it and sand anything uh, with your block to so get it all nice and smooth. Alright, um, I'm going to take a break a minute and cut some strips to go in here and we'll be right back. Okay, um, we've got some little uh, triangle stock. I, this is all I have. I would rather have just a slightly larger size, but it's hardwood. It's not balsa. But yet, they're small enough. It doesn't weigh anything. Um, these little saws are fairly reasonable. There's different brands. You can get them at most of your hobby shops. I just use a little 2 by 4 or 2 by 2 block to lay it on there and cut it. It's, it's not critical how straight or anything is. You don't have to sand it because it's inside. You're not going to see it. It's going to be hidden. You can also get a little miter box if you have, want to get a real perfect angle or a, a straight cut a little saw fits down in there you can put your wood in here and get a perfectly square cut or you know I think it's 45 angles they've got here uh, I didn't use it on this course because it doesn't matter but uh, just to show you that okay um, we've got the two longer pieces that I'll try to get this up here where you can see it I'm going to lay that right in the corner there. Now, uh, you probably can't see it, but there's a little space right there, but it's not laying down flat. The reason for that is there's glue in here that's kind of standing out. So what I'm going to do on the corner side of it, I'm going to take my sanding block and uh, 
I'm going to take that take that down so it sets into that corner better, kind of round it more or less. Not a whole lot. You don't want to take too much away, but just just kind of round that off and get rid of the sharp corner that is supposed to lay right in that 90 degree bend. Uh, when you bevel that off a little bit, you've got more of a rounded, and that should pretty much allow for most of the glue. If you still got a high spot, take it back out and do a little more. All right, and get it in there straight. All right, that's laying pretty good now. Okay, we got that in place. We're going to take our glue and just wick that on both sides, and it just this wood just soaks this stuff up. Make sure it's in there good and flat, touching both surfaces. Okay, we got that one. We'll do the bottom and this other side. But that is amazing how much extra strength just that little piece of wood will put in this thing. Um, I'm going to go ahead and bevel off the sharp corner because I know it's not going to go down in there good because of the glue that's in it. Might as well do them all while we're at it here. Okay, now lay this one down here in the bottom. That one fits nice and snug, and we've got it right in between the blind nuts in there. Okay, make sure it's laid in place. Start up above it. Let your glue wick in behind it and then do the same thing on the other edge get both edges put quite a bit in there so all right now we'll do this side over here um, see what I've got there always test fit it make sure it's gonna lay in there pretty good that one does so now ah uh, see I touched it with the glue tip and it pulled it. And what you want to do is start it up here on this piece of wood above it and let it run down into that so you're not touching it. I think my glue bottle is about empty. I'm going to have to get my other one out. Okay. Alright, we've got that firewall reinforced. We got the, all of the ribs put back together. Um, I, at one point, I thought about putting some cross braces in here, but I think that really they're not that bad. This is pretty solid. So once we get the covering on, it's going to be plenty stout. I am going to put a little more glue around the servo block just to make sure. It looks like it's glued pretty good, but it never hurts to reinforce it just a little bit. Same thing inside here. Uh, I'm going to glue that both ends and let it wick in there. I'm going to have to change my glue bottle here in just a second. All right, now we're going to... I can't... Yeah, you can't see it. can't get the camera angle up here, but here we go. We'll do a little bit on this side. Wick that seam down in there. And there again, uh, be sure and check this. Make sure you don't need to sand it if any glue bubbles up on top. And we'll turn it over and we'll put a little bit, get it around here where we can see it. I'm going to put a little bit in here. Start up here and just wick it right there and let it run. It'll run right down the side of that. I'm going to do a little section over here. Okay, now that's all reinforced. When that glue dries, it's going to be hard as a rock and it'll be twice as hard for it to uh, come out of there so okay that's uh, what pretty much what we do to reinforce uh, on that area I'll go ahead and do the other wing I won't do the whole footage on all of it if I find anything else uh, we'll show you how to do that uh, on the fuselage everything looked really good I don't think there's anything to reinforce on it I, I may put some CA just wick it in some of the seams but it's it's all solid it's glued pretty good uh, so anyway we will uh, get going on the other wing and get it ready, and then we'll be ready to lay some covering on this thing. Be back in a bit. Okay, we've got uh, all the joints 
reinforced. Uh, didn't take a whole lot of glue, but you can already, I don't know if you can see it, but if you look at the ends, they're not wiggling like they were before. I had some play right there for those joints. Now they're all solid, uh, way more solid than what it was. So, um, One thing, I, when I showed you to take the uh, triangle stock, and like in where the, the firewall back there, there was a little clumps, you know, glue down in there. When I told you to sand off the sharp edge on the the back of it, only do that when you have a joint that already has glue in it that it's holding it up. If you're building a new kit or there's no glue in that joint at all, you want that uh, triangle stock to fit right down into that corner snug. Uh, but the only reason I sanded that off on this is because there was a little layer of epoxy in there and it kind of held it out away from it. So I sanded off that so it would set right in the corner. But if you're doing a, a slick 90 degree joint somewhere, or like if I was going to put one right here, I wouldn't sand it off. I would just put it right in there and glue it down. So anyway, um, we're ready to start putting some covering on this thing. And I probably am going to start with the wings. Uh, one thing about covering now, laugh at me, I'm, I'm not very good at covering yet. I'm just now learning and and not great at it but I've, the tips I do know I will tell you about if you've never covered one before uh, try to all right, where you're going to have a seam of different colors like my end out here is going to be uh, one color kind of like my if you notice on my Ghost Rider plane it's black on the end and then other colors so what I'm going to do you want you want to try to lay the edge of that covering on a solid piece of wood so I can take that piece all the way to here if I want to, or I can terminate it here and bring this color over to there. But basically, if I go over so far on this wing, then you need a solid seam under there. Uh, I would prefer something a little bit wider, but this uh, second wing spar over is twice as thick as these. So whatever I decide to do here on my trim I'm probably going to put like a dark green stripe somewhere in here because that sticker I have will show up real good on it but I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that seam right to this Now you can go ahead and cover the whole width of this with that and then when I come from the center of the wing with whatever cover I'm putting there I will bring that and I will terminate it and cut it to where it fits right over the top of that that way I have a flat surface under there for that to glue to. If you just try to glue two seams together out here in the center, it can be done, but chances are it will pull apart and unless, because you can't, if you had covering on the other side, you couldn't get in there to hold anything against it. Uh, so you want, if, if you stick that together right here, it's going to flex. And when you try to push on it with your iron, it's going to sag in and push down. Well, then when it does stick, it's going to cause wrinkles. There again, when you use your heat gun to pull out your wrinkles, sometimes that seam will separate where if you get it glued down to this solid strip of wood it won't uh, so I'm, I'm gonna start with the wings and kinda see what I come up with I've, I've kinda got a laid out plan in my head but I may change some things along the way I'm gonna do the tips of the wings one color and then a dark green striping of some kind here similar to the, the sticks the way they are I'm not exactly sure yet I would like to do some angles the only bad thing of that is I don't have any hard surfaces so what I can do I could lay my green on here all the way over to here and then if I want to trim it with a big orange circly patch on top then I can I can cut circles or shapes in that and it, it doesn't really matter that there's already covering there so it's going to it's going to glue to that uh, and it'll work fine you just don't want to put two pieces together in one of these openings because it you're going to be disappointed it'll you'll end up tearing it back off and redoing it um, I can't think of much else uh, covering you will have to have a decent uh, covering iron there's all kinds of them out there this is a top flight monocoat heat sealing iron as your temperature gauge on it and but there's there's tower hobbies brand at tower there's a uh, there's all kinds of them I think hangar 9 probably makes one they probably all come in the same factory if truth be known but anyway that you have to have Re highly recommend getting the socks to go on it or have your wife make them my wife makes some of mine but this will keep the metal from scratching 
your covering, believe it or not, when you're rubbing that across there, putting pressure on it, it will scratch it. So if you put this on here, they get dirty after a while. Like right here, I've got a little bit of glue on here, uh, but I'm out of them. i got to get some more socks. Uh, another thing you're going to want is a little trim sealing tool. It comes with a couple different feet. This is real small, flat. This works extremely well uh, to get down into, okay, right up here, if I can get it over here right in here uh, you can get right down the edge of that and seal that down really good in those 90 degree corners like that uh, what we're going to do on this when I get to this point I will cover the engine nasal first bring it down flush and probably leave about a two millimeters or a sixteenth of an inch out onto the wing and then when I lay my wing covering on it'll go over that um, that's one thing you got to think about too is uh, when you lay your covering on, you always want to start with the bottom. You want to wrap your bottom seam up around this edge, and then when you put your top, your seam is under the bottom edge and you don't see it when your wings are right side up. So, and plus, it just for some reason seals better. So, always cover your bottom first uh, and then work from your top. Also, if you're doing, uh, you got different shape, just like this engine compartment here, the nasal. Uh, cover it first so your seam overlaps onto the wing surface then when you put the wing covering on you can overlap that and seal it down really good with that little trim seal iron into these joints uh, and like if I was going to do this a different color which I'm I'm thinking about it I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to do yet but anyway that's where those tools come in the other thing you're going to have to have is a uh, a good heat gun and these are like 20 bucks this is a top flight brand too but Tower Hobbies. I get, I get a lot of my stuff from Tower Hobbies. So uh, these are like $19.95. I think the heating, uh, sealing, iron, covering irons are somewhere around $20 to $24. And I believe the little trim seal is somewhere around $15 to $19. So not a big investment, but you, you're going to have to have them. Even if you don't build models, I learned a long time ago that you have to have these tools to patch stuff. You're going to get a hole in your covering somewhere at some point and you need the tools to cover that. You uh, just, I'm not building a whole kit but uh, just like my Ghost Rider, I, all I did was cut off part of the covering but I have to have all these tools to put that back and if you tear a big spot you know and hit something and tear it up you're going to have to have them to put the patch on and everything so some tools that you'll need for covering and I'm hoping to get much better at this as I go. Uh, like I said, I'm pretty new at the covering game. My good friend Ken has been very helpful and he's built all his life. Uh, that's all he did was build. He'd rather build them as fly them. He loves to fly, but he would rather build the kits or repair them as fly them. So kind of works out handy for us. I, I feel like I abuse him sometimes, but uh, he says not at all. He enjoys doing it. So if I have something real critical, that I don't feel comfortable that I can do a good enough job, I take it to Ken and let him do it because he he can uh, he can do about anything with these things and he's the one that taught me a lot of what I'm showing you here, uh, which is just a drop in the bucket. But you know I'm getting by, so hopefully it helps some of you guys, uh, especially newcomers that are getting into this hobby. It is a great great hobby, a lot of fun. I'm starting to enjoy the building and and remodeling part. Uh, kind of like Ken, about as much as I do flying. It's uh, it's just fun to make your own color scheme up and and uh, come up with a design. I've come up with a couple goofy ones. My Ghost Rider. This one's going to be called Gunslinger, and, and you know that all stemmed from just stickers that I found. And uh, so it's it's a lot of fun. You'll enjoy it if you ever get to going on it. So okay, we are uh, ready to put some covering on. So I'm going to probably uh, end this segment and then. I will do some covering today, but then I won't, I'll won't. i start filming. I won't put it on probably for a few more days. So I'm going to try to get at least one segment a week, maybe two on here, so you guys can follow this all the way through. And I, I hope, again, I'm not too boring. I apologize, but I'm just trying to cover every little point that I can think of, things that, would, that really helped me when I got into this and started repairing and building and stuff. There's just tips that as a new newcomer into this hobby you just don't know so hopefully I'll give you some information here that will help you out and and uh, as I learn it I'll try to pass it on to you I'm still learning a lot I'm only six years into this hobby so, uh, so some of these guys like Ken that's been doing it for 
35 or 40 years, uh, they have so much knowledge and they've seen so much stuff change and and the designs of the kits and everything over the years. They they know it all. So find you a, find you a, a club somewhere with some uh, veteran pilots and builders and uh, get in good with them and ask them ask them questions. Most of them are very very happy to be helpful and tell you and give you tips. You know, so. Uh, Find you somebody like that if you're new at this to help you on your first one. It's, I wouldn't recommend just taking one of these planes if you're a, a very new hobbyist and never done anything at all. I wouldn't recommend taking this and doing it all by yourself. Get with somebody that has had some experience so they can show you like how to overlap the covering and where to overlap it and, and stuff like that. And you'll be a lot more pleased. Your model will come out a lot nicer. Mine turned out okay. I, I think somebody like Ken could do a much better job. but. Uh, the only way I'm going to learn and get better at it is to keep doing it. So, uh, all right. Well, that'll be the end of this one, and we'll see you next round.